you are the one who is worthy of being called awesome. That means we are filled with awe by your presence this morning. And may this place be filled with your Holy Spirit today, that we may rejoice in your presence today. Oh God, thank you so much for your love, for dying on the cross, for coming into this world, Lord Jesus. You are awesome. You are mighty to save. You draw our hearts close to you. Father God, help us to love as you have loved us. Help us to love because you love us. God's people said. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Welcome to Advent. Welcome to the time of year that we celebrate the birth of our Lord. Now again, I think I said this last year, we can't prove that Jesus was born on December 25th. However, this is when we celebrate it. And uh, when we think of Christmas, I really hope it's true what Caden said. I hope he really does think of God first. Um, he wasn't thinking of that when he found out what I bought him the other day for Christmas. But I hope it's really true in, in all of our hearts, is that we're thinking about the fact that God came to this earth to be among us, to live as human. That's something to, to be so thankful for. It's amazing. So our series for Christmas this year is called, What Child Is This? And it's, we're going to ask that question a lot. What child is this? This question was brought forth from a poem. It was born from a poem in 1865 by a guy named William Chatterton Dix, entitled The Manger Throne. So this was originally a poem before it was a song. It's set to the tune of an English traditional folk song called Green Sleeves. Anybody familiar with that? I hope so. That's a great song. Um, so is What Child Is This? And, uh, and the title, it is intended to be the primary questions that the shepherds must have asked on that night they visited the baby Jesus. We're going to look into their story today. We're going to look at the birth of Christ this week through the perspective of the shepherds. And we're going, to, we're going to talk a lot about what a shepherd is. And we're going to talk a lot about what it means to be a shepherd and how that's connected to Christ. All right? So if you will, open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. Luke chapter 2. That would be the third gospel. It's right after Mark, just before John in the New Testament. <clears throat> and it reads like this, at least in my Bible. It's going to might sound different than yours. I'm using the ESV. And it says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, 
and you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. So what is a shepherd? What child is this? The child is the shepherd. Look at John 10, verse 11. To answer the, the, the question of the shepherds, what child is this? It won't be, an, it, I mean, it was answered right then and there. But Jesus really brought it out when he told his disciples, he says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life. Whoops, sorry. I am the good shepherd and lays down his life for his sheep. So a shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus describes himself as this, as the good shepherd. And shepherds lay down their lives for their sheep. The description of the shepherd is really a description of Jesus himself. They heard, they've long heard in the prophets about a child being born to be the savior of the world. But they didn't quite know who it was until the angel came and opened their eyes. That is why he came here. He is the one who came to lay down his life for humanity. Right? Jesus came here to lay his life down for you and me. And anyone who chooses to follow him, Jesus. Just as the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, even though shepherds have often been portrayed as rough around the edges and living at the bottom of society's ladder, in ancient Near Eastern history, the imagery of a shepherd is actually prominent. It is equated with righteous government. They often appeared in contexts where the subject of justice is prominent. So if you're thinking, because we have to think about this, Jesus didn't live in Western civilization like we do, right? He lived in an Eastern mindset. So when Jesus talks about shepherds, he's talking about them with great respect and prominence. But a lot of times society looks at shepherding, I mean literal shepherding, walking around with sheep and getting dirty and getting smelly. You're going to smell like sheep, right? And what does sheep smell? They, they, they smell pretty, pretty ripe. Right? But that's what Jesus came to do. He came here to smell ripe. No, I'm kidding. He came here to be among the sheep. Right? He says, I am the good shepherd. I came here to get dirty. I came here to be with you. I came here to live among you. I mean, this is literally God in the flesh living among us as human beings. How many religions can say that their God has done that? How many religions can say that they had... They look to God with, with joy 
And yes, fear and reverence and awe, because he's awesome, but also with joy and love and thankfulness. Shepherds are also known to be showing kindness and counseling. They protect. They guide those whom they are responsible for through every difficulty. They intended to signify rulership as a good thing. They were just. They were wise. And beneficial for the people. Sounds a lot like what a pastor should be, right? I mean, we're always talking about how a pastor needs to be shepherding his flock. And as I'm learning to become a shepherd, that's a tough challenge sometimes. But I will still say this, even on my toughest day, I am so thankful to be doing what God has called me to do. I've never been more thankful to be doing what God calls me to do. And sometimes I'm having to go like this to say, okay, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm going to make it. We're going to make it. Because some days you just lose sleep. Sometimes your heart is breaking for people. Not necessarily even for yourself. And I mean, I, I, I went with someone this week to put their dog down, you know, and their hearts are breaking over that. And me, I'm trying, I try to get all macho and just, I, with my dog anyway. I'm like, you're just a dog. You're just a dog. <sighs> you're a dog. But you know what? For some people, they're family. And it's like losing a loved one. And I remember that. I remember that when I was a kid, when I was 12 years old, and we had to put my dog down. Man, I, that was the first time I ever experienced death. And I was traumatized. And I think part of the macho act is trying not to feel that traumatized feeling again. And then I hear s someone come in and they're just totally broken because they accidentally squashed their dog. And didn't mean to. It was a total accident. It could have happened to anybody. And, and their heart's broken. Man, being a shepherd is you, 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 you walk with them through that. That's what Jesus came to do. One of the first careers in the Bible mentioned is being a shepherd. Genesis 4, verse 2. Abel was a keeper of sheep. That's what Abel did. He is Abel. And he keeps the sheep. And that's, the, and that's the sacrifice that God accepted. There's lots of Old Testament shepherds. Abraham, he was a shepherd. He was a very prominent shepherd. He had so many lives, so much livestock and sheep. Out of all the things he had the most of, it was sheep. Genesis 24. Jacob, his son... Genesis verse chapter 30. He was a shepherd. Job had everything. I said Jacob was his son, didn't I? His grandson. Sorry. <laughs> Isaac too. Isaac's in there. Get him in there. But Job, 42, verse 12. He had sheep. He had people taking care of them. Jesus talks about having many sheep. Later, within our John chapter 10 verse. Let's look at that. Let's look at chapter 10 again. Starting at verse 14. He says, Now it was... Wait a minute, make sure I'm in the right verse. Uh, I did... Alright. He says, I am the good shepherd. He repeats himself. Keep in mind, when you're reading through when Jesus is talking and he repeats himself, there's a reason he repeats himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. 
Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. It's a pretty powerful statement. You know who else was a shepherd in Bethlehem? David. David was a shepherd who eventually became what? A king. Okay, now if you think of the spectrum, okay, of what we think of as a shepherd, we think of down here, right? He becomes king of all Israel. So once again, God picks what our culture would think of as low on the totem pole to rise to the top. David is still known as Israel's greatest king. Not perfect, but great. David was Israel's greatest king. And you, we, many of us know how messed up David was. He was. He was a messed up dude, but he loved God. And that was the difference. He made a lot of foolish mistakes. He made a lot of foolish choices. He sinned big time. But he was still known as the apple of God's eye. And if you want, you can find that in 1 Samuel 16. It tells that story. So it brings us back to this question. What child is this? He is a shepherd and a king. Just like his ancestor David. The main duty of the shepherd to make sure the animals under his care have food and water. David's poem speaks to this. To answer the question, what child is this? Look at, look at Psalm 23. Verses 1 and 2. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Psalm 23. He refers to God as his shepherd. Meaning, not only was he a shepherd, but he's also a sheep, Right? Which also means that a shepherd is a protector. Look at verse 4 in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A shepherd is a protector and a comforter. Jesus walks with you through the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus walks through you when you're mourning a loss. Jesus walks with us when we're getting ready to face something we don't want to face. Jesus is with us when we're struggling with worry. Jesus walks with us when we are cowering with fear. Timothy is reminded that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And those are the things that Satan goes after us first with. It's fear. He wants to get in our heads first. But if you've got Jesus in your heart, that's going to overflow. The good shepherd, that was Jesus. He was a disciple maker. He passed on the legacy of discipleship and shepherding to his disciples. Let's look at John chapter 21. Starting in 
starting at verse 15. This is Jesus um, restoring Peter. And he says this, he says, When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. In other words, Jesus is telling Peter, Go be a shepherd. Go be a shepherd. Go get dirty. Go get smelly. Because you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to happen. And if you're in any kind of ministry at all, whether you're a pastor or a deacon or an elder or, or someone who cleans the, the church every week, if you are someone who um, helps out with a funeral meal, if you are someone who just helps out in general, if you're someone who works sound and audio, maybe you're someone who, who, who sits at the door and hands out bulletins and, and and makes people feel welcome when they come in. You know that you're doing the work of God. And you know if you're in it long enough that you're going to get your hands dirty. You're going to know it when you're doing the share center. You know it firsthand. You're going to get your hands dirty. Sometimes it's going to get ugly. But the beautiful side of it is is that we're learning how we as sheep are learning how to be shepherds, which is the exact same thing as becoming a disciple, being covered in the rabbi's dust. Yeah? I'm going to share with you a visual of what the shepherds went through when they... Uh, when they met the angel. All right, now listen up, boys. Y'all want to be good sheep herders and all, don't you? Two things you need to know. Number one, stay awake. And number two, you ask questions. You know, Benji, Benji, you don't have to ask questions now, all right? No, well, I mean, you can ask a question. I mean, you know, if something don't look right or, you know, if you've got a strange feeling in your gut, then, yeah, ask a question. For example... Uh, that, that night when all those angels visited, yeah, well, everyone else was asleep, not me, I was awake, just like my daddy taught me. Darn right I'm bragging, that's what separates men from the boys, son. So like I said, I was sitting there by the campfire, wide awake, and I just got this flutter in my gut. Like you know something's gonna happen, like something big's gonna happen, but you just don't know what it is, you know? I think that's it. You just don't know what you don't know. But I walk over that rise, and then bingo. I am looking at the biggest, scariest angel I ever did see. Not that I ever saw one, you know. And you know what the first thing out of that angel's mouth was? Don't be afraid. Too late. <laughs> and then that angel just got this nice look on his face. He said, uh, I've got a message to tell you. And then the big old angel said, A baby got born tonight. And he's gonna save the world. And then a mess of them angels came around and they were saying, glory to God. 
Glory to God in the highest. That's what they just kept saying. And then they was gone. Well, I don't need to tell you that we don't get invitations like that, you know, being crusty old sheep herders and all. But we went to Bethlehem, and I met that mama and that baby boy. I think they were a little shocked to see us. But we told them about the angels and all. I think that tickled her pink. And then we all just kind of stood there, just making sure everything was okay. Kind of like when a new lamb is born. And about the time he figured out everything's going to be fine, he just settle in. And you just kind of take in the whole thing. That's what we were doing. But this was different. Because underneath that big bright star, we were watching the world saving baby. And we got to brag on him a bit. And Benji, this old soul, it's been awake ever since. What child is this? He's the one who came down to lay his life down for us. He's the one who came to provide protect his flock. He is the one blessed beyond measure with ones he would call his own and who would come down we would know his voice. He is the one who is the good shepherd. His name is Jesus. Baby wrapped in swaddling cloth lying in a feeding trough just as the angel said he would be. Now go. Tell everyone what has been heard, experienced, and seen. Just as the shepherds did on that first Christmas in Bethlehem. What child is this? He's the good shepherd. Pray with me. Lord God, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for coming down and living among us. Thank you so much for showing us how to be sheep first, but sheep that become shepherds.